Usually our reviews focus on just the phone. With the Idol 4, however, we need to take a look at the whole provided package to fairly assess it. There's a whole box of tricks for the £229 price tag, and when you take everything into account, it's excellent value for money. So what's in the box? A detailed unboxing is linked in the description. This review is based on the UK EU 6055P version of the Idol 4 that Clove sell. So, as well as the VR headset, two cases are also included. There's one matrix flip case and one transparent bumper, plus a screen protector. An impressive pair of JBL earphones are also squirreled away inside. That's a lot of extras. There's no RRP on these bits, although I'd suggest about £100 for everything sold separately. The matrix case is a type of window case. Notifications appear inside the window instead of lighting up the whole screen. This works, but annoyingly there's no closing mechanism. The bumper and screen protector are nice little extras. Doubtless they were very cheap to include, however they are welcome when most manufacturers skimp on box contents these days. The JBL headphones are part of Alcatel's marketing. The idea is that the Idol 4 is worthy of flagship phones that are twice the price. To be fair, these are decent buds, a flat cable avoids tangles, and there's plenty of volume and bass. Alcatel providing all of these extras at £229 is very generous, even if you don't use many of them. Onto the VR. Now, the tech world is in love with VR right now, be it high-end £1,000 setups or much cheaper options. Mobile VR is a bit of a gateway experience. The quality is nowhere near an HTC Vive or an Oculus Rift, however provides the uninitiated with a snippet of what's possible in the VR space. If you've tried a Samsung Gear VR, then the Idol 4 VR is almost on par with that. Everything looks a little grainy, that's expected, the effect is made by just magnifying a 1080p screen that's only an inch away from your eyes. Samsung's £80 kit is better, it does have a focusing dial and a touchpad, which the Idol lacks. So a better comparison is perhaps Google Cardboard. Google's kit works with any Android phone that fits and just runs a VR app. The Idol VR essentially does the same thing, albeit with a much nicer headset. You get an adjustable strap and the foam inner around the eyes is very comfy. There are also two buttons on the bottom for navigating menus in the Alcatel VR app. Plenty of content is installed, there's 360 degree images and videos, a game, some news feeds with regularly updated videos and shorts. You can also download VR ready content through Google Play or Alcatel's own storefront. As with all VR content to date, the more stylized or cartoony apps and images provide the best experience. You can try out the realistic content, although I'd recommend loading up games for a more immersive experience. I installed Zombie Shooter VR to try things out and everything ran pretty smoothly. With Android N natively supporting VR and launching in a few months, we can expect many more apps towards the end of the year. The Idol 4's VR proposition is interesting. It's far cheaper than a Gear VR and a Galaxy phone, and much more comfortable than the £15 Google Cardboard. I don't think anyone will buy an Idol 4 just for the VR, although I can see a lot of people buying the Idol 4 and then enjoying it as an extra. If the Idol 4 is on your shortlist of phones to look at, this could be something that swings your decision. Now the Idol 4 is a handsome looking phone, as was the Idol 3 last year, so that's two years on the trot Alcatel have produced a smart and professional phone. At this price, decent design often disappears, getting the best specifications usually takes precedence, so hats off to Alcatel for putting the effort in. This could easily pass for something far more expensive. The edges and trim are a durable plastic, although give off the impression of metals. The speaker grills are finely drilled in each of the four positions, top, bottom, back and front. All the buttons click nicely and don't wobble, even the weight is well balanced. Little touches are also attended to smartly, for instance the SIM tray is perfectly flush, a minor detail to some maybe, but I've seen plenty of cheap phones with wonky trays. The back cover has a glossy reflective coating which is frankly stunning. Wiped clean, it's a bit of a fingerprint magnet, it's almost mirror quality. An almost invisible pattern has been introduced too. With just a small amount of light hitting it, a pair of flares radially emanate from the Alcatel logo. This effect spins as you rotate the phone. In direct sunlight, it's almost impossible to miss. Certainly not the sort of design flare you'd expect down at this price. My only gripe has to be the positioning of the boom key. This context sensitive button sits centrally on the right edge, exactly where your thumb lands if you're right handed. That's not usually a bad thing, but I've yet to meet someone who didn't think it was the power button. I've lost count of the times I've pressed it to try and unlock the screen. Eventually, you condition yourself to use the actual power button on the top left, but until then it gets frustrating quickly. 
boom key positioning aside, this is a truly well manufactured bit of kit. I've seen four to five hundred pound phones that don't look and feel as good as this in the hand. Software wise, the Idol 4 will be hit and miss for many. Android 6 is installed, good start, but there's a lot of Alcatel customization. This doesn't really affect the casual user, however I know plenty resist changes to the stock Android experience. Alcatel skin is called the One Touch Launcher. You can remove the Google search bar, unlike the Google Now Launcher, and it has a built-in response to the boom key being pressed. That boils down to a little more than a frivolous lens flare animation. The launcher also allows you to add a parallax effect to wallpapers. This is on by default, so as you tilt the phone, the wallpaper slides around slightly. It's a subtle effect that gives the impression of the app icons floating above the surface and can be used on any of your own images. The lock screen can be heavily customised. Wall shuffle picks a random background image from a collection. This feature is also on by default, so I'd recommend going through the images to choose which ones you want. Explaining why a baby's face was on my lock screen was kind of interesting when I don't actually have any of my own kids. There are also a long list of potential app shortcuts that can be added to the lock screen. Extra display settings include changing the colour temperature and deciding if you want the reversible screen feature on. This flips the screen over when the phone is held upside down and also switches the microphone and earpiece over so you can answer a call either way up. Core system apps have all been lightly skinned with a flat design and pastel colours. The app icons have also been turned into rounded squares. This creates a consistent feel across the phone's UI. A few Alcatel apps sneak onto the phone as well. There's Boost, an optimization app for storage and battery. These kind of things seem popular at the moment. A compass application which overlays uh, the compass details on top of a real-time image from the camera. Um, finally, there's a user care app as well. This provides FAQs, tutorials, contact details, a diagnostic tool. Nice additions to have, even if many users don't actually find out that it's there. There's plenty of third-party apps as well. Some are integrated as system apps, which means they can't be uninstalled. Uh, the removable apps include Facebook, Messenger, a couple of games. There's Deezer, which is an alternative to Spotify and other popular music streaming apps. Uh, other removable apps are WPS Office and a Zender file transfer app for sending large files to all sorts of different devices. The fully integrated apps are Waves Max Audio and the popular Swift Key. These can't be removed. Uh, the same goes for three other apps Fuse, Little Star, and Teaser Life Casting. You might be unfamiliar with those. Of these two, Fuse and Teaser are integrated into the camera app. Fuse creates spatial photography, which is kind of hard to explain without seeing it in action. Imagine moving around an object or person, taking short video clips as you go. You then stitch those clips together into a continuous kind of jump cut video, like a panorama. The finished Fuse is somewhere between a video and a HIF image. The result is you can rotate around the finished Fuse by dragging the screen or tilting the phone. It's a fun little toy, but I can't see much use for it beyond casual play. Then again, people said the same thing of Instagram. Uh, there's a small but vibrant Fuse community, so if you decide to have a play, you can share with the community, comment on others, and echo others to your own followers. Uh, Teaser is a live broadcasting service. It's accessible from the camera when you press the boom key during recording. Uh, similar to Meerkat and Periscope, live streaming content publicly or to select groups. The app is fairly sparse. It's to be expected. The startup launched only a few months back this year. Um, mileage from Teaser is going to depend on having friends and family that use the app or by following accounts from personalities and whether or not Teaser itself takes off will uh, remain to be seen. The last non-removable app is Little Star that's integrated into the VR experience. Uh, this is a hub for 360 videos and VR content. Content comes from celebrities, bands, news sources, documentary makers, and as VR becomes more mainstream, Little Star are gonna try and be a, a hub for regularly updated content where you can find new things. I also count four extra app stores on top of Google Play. You know, first is a collaboration with the uh, game developer and publisher Gameloft. Then there's three separate Alcatel stores. There's a main apps store, um, a games store, which is a subset of the apps. And then finally, there's a VR store, which is actually pretty useful to find specific VR content. 
Uh, Alcatel's ownership under the Chinese company TCL may have something to do with all these extra stores. Issues with Google services in China have created a kind of self-contained industry for app stores in China. So even if these extra storefronts don't get much use outside of China and Chinese mainland, it's pretty much a no-brainer for them to be installed on the phone. Um, they've already been made. They're already part of their regular updates. The 13 megapixel camera on the Idol 4 does pretty well for itself. At this price, no one really expects too much. Often it's enough in this tier that the camera is just okay. Fine detail is picked out well, and the processing handles color reproduction admirably. A couple of times it seems to get a little confused though in high contrast situations. In one shot, the sky quickly turns from blue to almost white, although the sun was perpendicular to the shot when I took it. Changes in focal length seem to be handled well. An image with a bush in the foreground resolves detail both close and far, even with that bush blowing pretty heavily in the wind. Switch to the 8 megapixel selfie camera and the app gives you a beautification option. That's a little slider on the screen so you can smooth over skin tones and wrinkles. Uh, things get grainy quickly in low light, but that's a drawback of many mobile cameras. Um, there is a night mode, although all that really does is just keep the shutter open for longer, so you have to stay very still. Alcatel's app has some manual options for ISO, aperture, white balance, vocal adjustment. Um, there's no preset modes, so it's just auto or manual. There's a panorama feature, and there's a couple of little video tools as well. You can shoot in 30 frames per second slow-mo at a reduced resolution, and there's a micro video utility that lets you stitch together short video bursts into a kind of jump cut video. Eh, fun for a moment. The Idol 4 won't be challenging a top-end Galaxy or iPhone camera anytime soon, but overall the results are more than good enough. In conclusion, this isn't a phone for Android purists, however I've really enjoyed my time with it. Alcatel have delivered a good looking and well performing mid range smartphone with plenty of cool extras. It's more than just that though, this is Alcatel trying very hard to make a noise and be heard. The styling and design work are on point. It's hard to impart some personality in the industry, most phones look the same. The Idol 4 manages this with slick edging and a really stunning back panel. Piling accessories into the box and advertising VR are also sure to win a few headlines. The VR may be a basic proposition you'll actually play with it, although it's an easy sell. To be honest, it's pretty hard to see how Alcatel have actually managed to price all of this at £229. Even for the smartphone alone it would be a decent price. It's a bold statement to the rest of the market and should realign people's expectations for a phone of this tier. It's possible the RRP has been made artificially low by Alcatel in order to get a foothold in the market, but at the end of the day, that's how the game works. The end result to the consumer is a very respectable smartphone and accessories at an excellent price. Unless you demand a purer Android experience or the comfort of known brand recognition, there's not much else I'd recommend under 250 quid.